<laughs> so we hear a growl of a terrible monster. Lara looks around and then we find ourselves in the next level. A continuation of the tomb of Samarkad called the Guardian of Samarkad. So at least the namesake is similar. So hello and welcome everyone to Let's Play Tomb Raider for the last revelation. This is August 115 speaking and Again, we find ourselves in something which I feel should have been one and the same level, but instead, due to memory constraints, they decided to split it. Now, you can return to the Tomb of Samarkad areas, one closes behind you and the other is a crawl space which is too high up, the winning path and the losing path behind the panel, the one which we ultimately took to get all the secrets and most goodies and kills as possible. So let's dive further in, and the name Guardian of Samarkad is really interesting actually, because if you remember the pair of red eyes that were glaring at Lara from inside the tomb when she entered it back from the Temple of Karnak during the FMV where she encountered Von Kroy who trapped her inside, this pair of eyes is what we are finally going to encounter deeper down in this level. That's the Guardian of Samarkad, which, uh, you know, considering the actual layout of the Tomb of Samarkad makes no sense, Lara saw him then and there, but, you know. We are also going to see the pair of red eyes in a future FMV again, as a bit of a closure of this Karnak Levels chapter. <laughs> okay, I'm really looking forward to that, but later about that. Now, what I'm super happy about is that over here, I'll have another opportunity to show you uh, what one of you pointed out to me, and thank you very much for that, by the way. I mentioned the hard way of getting through, and I was showing off, but I did not mention the easy way of getting through these traps, which, you know, probably would be more helpful to show you rather than the hard way. So, first of all, let me explain a couple of things. Uh, from here, all the way through across the bladed trap, uh, there are five squares. And five squares is an ideal distance to start sprinting after hearing the second click and making a dive through. Around the corner is another one of these, which is also at five squares distance. And as it happens, five squares was also the distance that in the previous level Secret 6, uh, the blades were um, positioned against us by. So, that's why it's so for me at least, easy to make it via the hard way, otherwise I would have to choose a different timing to make it across, but, you know, we might encounter these in a future with a uh, different distance than five squares, and in that case I might not feel so brave, and also you might have a bit of trouble, let's say, with the timing, so I pretty much recommend aligning Lara as close as possible, it should cut over her head by, you know, doing this, but anyway, close as possible using the side steps, that's, uh, oh please don't lose your boobs, Lara. That's the best way. If you try and walk forward, you will get hurt. You will not die necessarily, but you will get a large chunk of your health taken care of. So, the moment the blade traps are, you know, opened, I would recommend making a diving roll through them. So, that's either pressing forward and backward, which in this situation might be a bit risky, because you can end up moving forward. So, use the roll hotkey. In my case, on the PC version, that's the end and you will find yourself safely across. Now, if you want to do it, you know, again, again, I recommend sidestepping to align Lara. Ooh, that is really close. And roll. And that's it. You will not come to harm like this. Now, that, now that that's out of the way, let me do it uh, the way I want to do it. <laughs> so the hard way. It's important to time the dive correctly. Even if you know the distance and you start sprinting at the right time, if you delay or you start diving too soon, uh, you will still take some damage. Okay, let's go. Nicely done, Lara. Smooth like that. So we now know the easy path and the uh, and the hard path through these things. Now, oh my goodness gracious, I love this place. What is this? The fourth time I'm saying this is the most memorable area of Tomb Raider 4? <laughs> I'll probably say it like 10 times more, but my goodness, an actual miniature map of uh, the Upper Egypt. This is amazing. Now, we see the Lighthouse of Alexandria here, which is not entirely accurate. The Lighthouse is, since 1970s, it's rumored to be a bit off the coast, you know, not actually within Alexandria. Then we see Luxor, Karnak, we see the uh, Giza with the necropolis of Giza, with the pyramids and the Sphinx. I'm not sure what the huge pharaoh head is supposed to represent. I think that's Karnak, and to the right that's Thebes. I'm not entirely sure. I'm also not sure about the box over here. What is that supposed to represent? Nevertheless, this map... Again, I have no idea why such a beautiful and gorgeous map is within... Um, 
is within Samarkand's tomb? Like, why did he need it? What is it supposed to symbolize? What we are interested in is a key item inside the biggest pyramid of Khufu, right? Which, by the way, we are totally going to climb in Tomb Raider 4. Like, you can't have an Egyptian video game without it. But later on about that. Now, to do that, we are going to need to trigger an ancient Egyptian laser light mechanism. You know, they, they were fairly common. Every household had them. They also had, like, uh, kitchen automatons, which wash dishes. They also had pretty good TV shows, from what I hear. And for that, we're going to need to trigger a mechanism, inserting a key item over here. And then get our hands on the key item inside the pyramid to trigger the trapdoor to get to the section where the actual guardian of Samarkand is. So without further ado, my god, I love this map. It pains to, you know, be separated from it. Let's maybe just directly crawl climb over here because we're gonna have to run through a gauntlet of traps to get our hands on the prize. Yeah, in this level it actually takes quite a while for you to even get your hands on the first pickup, which is really interesting. Now, this is a new kind of mechanism we didn't see before. We need to open the door on the other side of the room where Lara's head is facing to get to the pedestal with the key item. So, if you trigger the mechanism and look to the right, you notice the door was barely lifted and it keeps shutting down. Now, I did a bit of a trial and error and what I found out is that Lara has to do this five times in order for you to have enough time to go through the door. Maybe some of you are able to do it even if you do it four times. Personally, I'm not that good. So I would recommend five times, it's a more of a guarantee, and the cool thing is you just need to hold it. You don't need to press it over and over again, so just hold it until Lara does it five times. This is four, this is five, you can now release and go and run jump across it, that will save you some time. And do the same thing here. I would recommend not sprinting, even though these traps are here, because you need to have full control over Lara to do the jumps, not somersault dives. Oh my god, that was something so immensely satisfying. And I recommend approaching this, well, you can also do it safely by approaching it diagonally, but from the back you are at the safest, because you can see these indentations on the pedestal, blades will come protruding, just like that. Boom. Off go your limbs. So, um, yeah, and in order to get down safely without taking any damage on this checkerboard, just do this. Because if you were to fall here, you would take minor damage. And be ca very careful about these, because, yep, some of these, not all, are traps as well. So, in order to be absolutely safe, you know, jumping is the way to go, but I also prefer to just trigger some of them by, yeah, doing this. I don't know, there's a, there's a sense of satisfaction from doing that. And this is, by the way, what we've been avoiding on the platforms above. These massive, enormous swords. Whew. That looks enormously painful, really. Especially imagine if they're rusted and blunt and... Oh, I don't want to think about that. Goodness gracious. I mean, the best thing you can hope for at that point is just to lose your head and be done with it, really. Now, oh, I, I haven't really even taken a closer look at what it is we picked up, and it's so beautiful. It's golden... Golden... Vre... Vre... Vreus? Vreus? Uh, yeah. Golden winged thingy? I think it's supposed to be a winged female. I'm not exactly sure what uh, this winged woman is representing in ancient Egypt. But the funny thing is, is that we are going to encounter a couple of these in uh, later on, I think, in uh, Alexandria. So it's interesting because we get a key item representing a creature that we're just going to shoot down probably with Uzis later on, which makes it lose some of its mystique, you know. <laughs> That's just Lara's way. Oh man, now behold, this is an absolute feast for the eyes. Goodness. You know, this is making me think that ancient Egyptians also invented toy trains. Just a thought, you know. <laughs> okay. Wow. And I love the fact that these are probably lens through which the light is, you know, coming in even faster. And how the individual appendages of the device combine into a circle. Oh man, this is so great. Oh, and by the way, one thing I haven't really pointed out, if you take a closer look at, you know what, let's, let's use our binocs for this, why not? Any excuse to use binoculars is an acceptable excuse. Farah, please, thank you. 
This is sort of a miniature of the Sphinx's head in the Tomb of Seth, if you remember, on top of which we were climbing into which mouth we entered to reach the burial chambers, into which right ear we entered to get our hands on some shotgun ammunition. It, it, that's just really interesting. Ah, the Sphinx. We're gonna visit the Sphinx as well, of course. Don't you worry about a thing. And there we go. This looks like a, something you would put into a fuse box, which, you know, seeing the technology these guys had might just be the case, the so-called guardian key. So let's insert it. Oh, and by the way, you might be wondering what's... Um, here mirroring where we got the golden brayers. Nothing. Just a slippery slope and a dead end. So it's a bit of a mystery. Not sure why that is there. Because we are gonna enter the trap door. Okay. So the fuse works. That's very good. Now this is somewhat of a pain point because if you time your jump perfectly from this slide you can save a lot of time in accessing the first secret. It's not necessary, it just saves a lot of time, and I did manage it only once, and I sincerely doubt I will manage again, but let's just see. Oh my god, yes! Oh. Okay, okay, wow, I'm so happy I recorded this. <laughs> I literally managed it like once in ten times, so if you just monkey swing across to the left from where you entered, and please ignore the bets, they're not worth the trouble. We are going to take care of them soon. Uh, okay. This is the entrance into the first secret, right? Oh, this is so cool. I'm so happy I recorded this. You know, even if we die in this level, for whatever reason, at least we have this. Ah, precious moment indeed. And yet, don't really bother, you know, trying to draw pistols and shoot at them uh, from the crawl space. I know it's tempting, but trust me, these guys they fly through the ceiling, through the walls, through the floor. The moment you will try that, just gonna disappear and then reappear at the most inconvenient moment. Oh, we're invincible now, that's, that's nice. Yeah, but let's just get deeper into the room. That's one taken care of. Now oh, hold on a sec. <gasps> Lara! Okay, okay. So, uh, bets taken care of, thank goodness about that. Now, uh, I am very happy we didn't fall and set ourselves on fire. So, first things first. Shotgun shells and explosive arrows already. Which is really interesting because the goodies we are gonna get after, well, risking our life uh, in the fire are a bit less interesting. So, that's the ladder to go back, yeah? Now, let's make a distinction. What we are facing here should be the west. Yep, that's exactly the case. So, this is north, but the western one is what we are interested in. Because all the other traps have fire going on all the time. It is only the western one, which goes on and off. But interact with it twice. Once to get shotgun shells, the other time to do something with the eastern one. <gasps> there you are, you bastard! So now we know we've taken care of both of you. Wow, okay, okay. Whew. Wasn't sure for a while. Now. Uh, yeah, so what we did by re-triggering the western one is that the eastern one now starts to shut itself on and off. So this allows us to get our hands on Uzis, and you can trigger it again, but the timing is different, so just go back, because you will not have enough time to trigger it the second time and get out safely. So this one, you know, best to split it into two interactions. And now that we've re-triggered it, the northern one is off completely, whereas the southern one is now going on and off. Now the southern one actually holds a large health pack and you cannot interact with it twice. I'm pressing control, nothing happens, so let's get out before we burn. So that's everything, that's all the goodies from the secret, so you might be wondering, okay, what's the deal with the northern one? Should we interact with it? Um, I will, but you shouldn't. Uh, first of all, you can interact with it twice. But the second uh, time does nothing, whereas the first time summons a swarm of beetles. Now, I'm totally gonna do that, just to show you, right? So, this already triggered a swarm of beetles, you can do it second time, but the beetles are here, so best to... Whoa, get out! <laughs> so, just to show you that the beetles are here, you know, for an accurate statistic count and so on, I triggered it, but, you know, you don't have to. There is really no point in doing that. Okay. Oh man, I am so happy we managed to get here from the slippery slope and get rid of both the bats so that they didn't, like, fly away outside the map or anything like that, because I'm paranoid even that sort of thing might happen. Lara, please go on, thank you. Okay. Now, 
the area that we completely ignored because of the first secret because I managed to make that perfectly timed jump from the slippery slope and by the way I'm gonna show you the intended way to get here don't you worry about a thing in case you won't manage that jump which is very likely it's extremely difficult there we go so now we are in a very interesting hall with a lot of bad doors these doors have a significance now let's just go across and by the way this is where we entered from that's what I jumped on and grabbed but in case you don't manage that whoa whoa in case you don't manage that uh, this is where you can get on however as you can imagine monkey swinging all the way from here especially with the bats appearing later on very annoying so I would recommend at least trying attempting to make the jump and mind the small health pack. By the way, you might have noticed the torches over here shut off as we passed by them, which is really scary. It's getting really quiet. Hmm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh no, 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 no. Whoa, yeah, there's really no need to pull the lever. <laughs> <laughs> because this is gonna happen. I just like doing it for whatever reason. Apparently, according to some information I found online, it should be a safeguard if uh, the majestic beast we just encountered will not manage to... Lara, the bet. Thank you. Whoa! Will not manage to knock it down for whatever reason. Now, what we just took a look at is the Guardian of Samarkand, this beautiful golden-plated majestic and invincible beast. Oh. Okay. No, puppy. Don't... Okay, okay, you, you're very good, you're very good. You let us pick up the health pack. Yeah, you, you play around, puppy. My god, he's ripped, look at those muscles. Okay, so what we want is to get our hands on a torch, not to continue the level, but to light these things on fire. Unfortunately, we need to light the torch on fire first. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Okay, so the problem is that torch is all around, but they are too high, we can't really reach them, they're not accessible at all. So what are we to do? Well, you might have noticed there was one at a relatively accessible level right over here. This is just behind the door that the bull knocked out, the Guardian of Samarkand. So now that we have the torch lit, we can return and open up the path into the second secret. And mind the sort of transparent floor beneath us, that's actually where the second secret is. It's just the way to access it is not entirely intuitive, but you know. Just like in the previous level, if you get a torch, it usually has a use other than scaring beetles that are not even here. And there we go, second secret open up. Ta-da! Yeah, the transparent floor is now above us, so I should refer to it as a ceiling, I guess. And drop the torch, by the way, because even though Lara has a free hand, she will not interact with any of these objects if you are holding the torch. She will refuse to pick them up for reasons unknown to me you know so let's light up a flare she's much more wieldy in that case so these should be i think normal arrows and notice i'm approaching them diagonally again just to avoid these things like with the golden brace okay uh shotgun shells and careful there's a trap on the left as well just because there isn't one on the right by the way but just on the left completely randomly and a large health pack o and be careful because of a ball that has spikes I'm not sure if these can be crawled under. I have not actually tried that. I'm worried that might not be the case. So you know what? Let's just go around it, shall we? And I picked up the torch just because it brings me comfort in this darkness, but it's completely unnecessary. I'm gonna have to get rid of it anyway. And the Guardian of Samarkand doesn't really mind, so yeah. Now, you might be wondering, how do we continue? Well, the way to continue, for me personally, is even more secret than the actual secret because we need to get wow he's aiming really well we need to get at the beginning of this massive hall from where we access the first secret and there is one door we need the guardians help to knock down you know we're gonna play matador and it's not the only time in this level we are gonna do it three more times which is absolutely entertaining okay another bird spawns here once you release the guardian just so you know the fact that a new enemy appears is actually a good sign in Tomb Raider games that you are making a progress. So let's lead him to this door over here and oh my god, let's use the Binox. Lara? Okay. <laughs> that was very stupid. He did not even knock down. <laughs> this is. Okay, this is hilarious. This has never happened to me. Uh, okay, okay. Let's just do. Let, let's do the exact same thing but not fuck it up. Oh, wow. 
Wow, great stuff, Lara. So he hit you even though you were above him. Great hitboxes. Um, okay, okay. So let's do this again. Okay, come here, puppy. Whoa. And you didn't knock down the door again? There must be something wrong with you. Huh. Well now, you're making sounds. I should be the one making very angry sounds. Come on. Come on. Come on now. Ah, there we get a good look at him at least. Well, now he stops in... I think there's something very wrong with his behavior. This was not supposed to happen. Hmm. They're not gonna shoot a movie about this. It's not cool enough. Okay, okay, again. How hard can it be? And he did not knock down the door? Interesting. And... what? Um... This is unusual. His behavior is unlike anything I've experienced so far. Okay, so one more hit like this and we are gonna die. So Lara, you'd best make a very good jump. Or that, yeah. Uh, okay, so... hmm. Well, this is embarrassing. Okay, we're gonna need your cooperation, Guardian of Samarkand. Well, now you knocked down the door and you knocked out. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. The first death of Tomb Raider 4. Ah, it was bound to happen. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know what? I will see you guys back at this spot. Well, you know, I'm happy that the very first death of Tomb Raider 4 in our Let's Play was at least a very memorable one. Ah, this bull is completely uncooperative. Let's see if we can, you know make him behave better. I will see you guys back at this spot. Okay, now as far as second chances go, this is a very much well-deserved one. It took me such a long time to get here. <laughs> Something about the fire traps in the first secret. Wait, here are the binox. So, second attempt. Whoa, okay. And he didn't do it. <sighs> you know, I see a pattern here, a pattern of certain behavior that I really don't appreciate. At least we managed to avoid taking damage, but seriously, this bull needs to get its shit together. Okay, again, it took us taking damage, but at least he kicked the door down. Now, I don't feel confident about jumping over him, so let's do this. And run forward into what is the final area of the level. Finally, hallelujah. Now it's quite big, quite impressive. But there's not much to explore here other than these three eyes. So let me explain a couple of things. We're gonna do something immensely satisfying. We're gonna lure the bull into these eyes so he cracks them. Yes! <laughs> now, uh, you only need to crack that eye to open the door which leads to uh, extra goodies and pickups and so on. If you do want to exit the level, you need to crack these two eyes. So first, the one on the left as you enter the room. And again, we took damage. Well, that was not much of a charge. And the one right next to the two door. So, I don't know why one of them requires... Whoa. Two eyes to be cracked, the other one only one, but there you have it. That's the implemented logic. What I don't again like is his... Oops. He's not even charging. He is just following us, then stopping in the middle. This is really strange. In none of my trial run... Oh! Attempts has this happened. I'm starting to hate this beast so very much. <laughs> See, he just reconsiders halfway through and doesn't charge into the eye. Okay, you know what? I think we have to do it. I'm going to use a health pack for the first time in our playthrough here. And I'm doing it with a clear conscience on my mind. Please. Please try to hit the eye, you idiot. Hooray! Okay, okay, so halfway to success, now this one. This is all just to open the level exit. You can also do it later after you explore the upper area, but you know, I just want to get it over with now, so that we can ignore this guy for the rest of the level. Oh my god, you stupid beast! For all your armor and jewels, you certainly don't have much brain power. Okay, okay, here. Come on, puppy. Here, over here, there's a treat waiting. There we go, okay. So maybe using the health pack was not even necessary, but there you have it. So, if you want to exit the level, 
Oh, it was necessary. <laughs> okay, just take the left path. If you are interested in more goodies and the final secret, then go over here because here we'll find, no, you're not going to follow us, a ladder leading into the upper floor. Now, the third secret of this level is somewhat of a middle finger to all of us completionists here. And you'll understand what I mean. So first, let's get the goodies that will not make me angry. Mind the ceiling? Yeah, you know what will happen. Spikes from a ball. Ah, okay. Whoever has balls like these could use some Manscaped products, to be honest. Okay, Uzis and uh, shotgun shells. That's it. Lots of ammunition that, again, we are not really going to use because all the enemies we are encountering are bats and an invincible one. Great stuff. Yeah, I don't think I actually explained this so far, but you cannot deal any damage to the Guardian. And yeah, I'm probably going to show you what happens, or even better said, doesn't happen when you apply a little gunfire. But yeah, mind the ceiling gap over here. This is the secret number three. It's very easy to miss. Lara, thank you. Now... Whoa! No, 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 no! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, whoa. Whoa, you, you just stay there. But interestingly enough, the ball didn't deal any damage when it touched us. Or didn't it touch us? No, I'm confused. Anyway, decision time. As soon as you pick up any of these, the other two pedestals will set themselves on fire. That's what this is all about. So, the idea behind this is that you get to pick up either a small health pack, normal shotgun shells, ammunition, or a large health pack. Why anyone would pick up a small health pack is a mystery to me, not much of a choice. A different ammo type would make this more interesting. Now, here's the thing. And you know what? Uh, yeah, I'm probably first gonna choose what I want, and that is the shotgun shells ammunition. And there you go, the other two set themselves on fire. So, is it really impossible to get all three goodies? No, in fact, you can still pick these up. Lara will set herself on fire, but, you know, that's not much of a problem for a completionist, right? You would unfortunately be wrong. What I did was I pick up all three goodies and as Lara was set on fire, I kept popping health packs. By the way, hotkey number 9 is large health pack on the PC version and hotkey number 0 is small health pack, just so you know. And I did manage to reach the secret. It took about 12 or 12 and a half large health packs to reach it. And I thought to myself, you know, if this is the price to pay to be a completionist, I'm very happy and willing to pay it. So it is possible to get all picks up, uh, pickups in this level. But here's the problem. Do you remember back in Surface Karnak levels when I told you that if you do get poisoned and you transition into the next level, you will not be cured of poisoning? Your health bar will just refill? The same logic is applied to being set on fire. So these are like different status effects. Let's say, you know, if you played any of the Pokemon games, if <laughs> you're poisoned or on fire... Uh, when you start the next level, well, when you finish this level whilst Lara is set on fire and you start the next level, your health bar will refill, but Lara will be burning. It's hilarious, by the way. You should definitely try it, purely because of the soothing music and the impressive camera angle that starts at the beginning of the next level, but Lara just stands there doing nothing on fire. It's absolutely hilarious. The problem is, we don't have enough health packs to finish the entirety of the next level whilst being on fire, although that would be an interesting challenge. And then, it takes ages in the next level until you reach some area where you can douse Lara. I have tried, so... <laughs> Believe me when I say, if you do want to complete the game, you have to let go of two items over here. If you do not want to complete the game, um... You know, pick them up. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, just challenge yourself to pick them up and reach the level exit. It's a lot of fun. And I kind of want to be careful because we don't want to step here or there and set Lara on fire. So, can we crawl under? Oh, perfect. Okay, okay. Yeah, mind another one. Just like that. A, a little farewell parting gift. It's pretty funny. Okay, cool. Well, at least I'm glad you can crawl under these, these. That opens up a lot of options of safety. But yeah, let's say you are set on fire, so what you'll want to do is pretty much just drop over here, ignore... Oh my god! I hate you so much! Oh dear god. 
I guess that means I will see you guys back at the very level exit? I think so. Oh dear god. This is quite fun. Well now, that was quite a journey back. Now, the good news is that I have managed to avoid using any health pack at all during my rerun. We were just a little bit more successful with that bloody beast. Now, <laughs> I don't want to repeat the same events again, so maybe let's see where he's at, what he's doing first before we drop down... Oh! Oh, look at him. He seems to be stuck in a corner somewhere. Let's take a better look. Isn't that just adorable? You know what? You can stay and rot there for all I care. Let us go down and into the level exit. Now, this is going to be tricky because I'm also going to have to make a save. Hoping that, you know, we're not going to die each time we reload. So, the moment you climb up this ladder, that's the end. So, let us look at the statistics screen. So, this was Guardian of Samarkand. It might seem like a short and sweet level and... Uh, by the time taken it really does look like that, but it took me so many retries to get where I am right now. And two very unexpected deaths. I really did not expect that this is gonna be the level to break our no death streak. Still pretty impressive as we are reaching the end of Karnak. Now, we have found uh, 17 out of 19 pickups or items in this level. Mind you, you can get all 19 out of 19, but in that case you will not be able to continue playing the game so it really is the case of which object you choose again a huge middle finger from the developers towards us completionists but uh, there you have it now at the beginning of the next level you will see what i mean by how hilarious it is to see lara on fire now <laughs> but that's for another day uh, we also killed six out of eight enemies, so that's pretty much six bets and the Guardian of Samarkand is invincible, Lara will aim his uh, her weapons at him but nothing will happen, and also the one swarm of beetles we have encountered in secret number one. And when it comes to secrets we have found all three in this level, which brings us to the total of 40, which is quite impressive because we are nowhere near half of the game, yet we already have found 40 out of 70 secrets, but you know, the first Cambodia level is not really a fair comparison because every pickup was a secret there, so hence the head start. So with those words, let us finally escape uh, Samarkat's tomb, this evil place, his evil guardian, and uh, you know, I will see you guys next time in what I consider to be one of the most beautiful and enjoyable levels of Tomb Raider 4. Oh, and before I forget, let's save, shall we? <laughs> Yeah, let's save on the ladder and see what happens once I'll be reloading. Yeah, so I'll see you guys next time. Take care now.